What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode of Investing 101. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to value cryptocurrencies and digital assets. This is a space I'm just getting more and more into myself. I own a little bit of Bitcoin and Ethereum, and I've been trying to learn as much as possible because I just think this is a fascinating new era and asset class of finance. My mission with this episode is to kind of open source my learning and thought process around how I value cryptocurrencies, and then I wanna get as much comments, feedback, engagement. I think in 50 years, people are gonna look back on this era in time as the definitive moment where all the theories behind cryptocurrencies, valuations, and digital assets, and what they are, like we're formed. This is just such an exciting time to put these ideas out there that I just wanna get a discussion going. So I'm amped about this. So let's get right into it. Everyone seems to think that because Bitcoin is just something on the internet that exists digitally with nothing really backing it, it's just a big pump and dump. Everybody's just buying it. It's this massive bubble. But let's take a step back. What's the dollar? A piece of green paper. What's gold? A shiny rock. What's Bitcoin? Just a piece of code. None of these really have much inherent value. If the apocalypse hits, you're gonna want guns and tuna a lot more than you're gonna want Bitcoin, gold, Ethereum, or US dollars. What is currency at its core? It's a means of exchange. It's a way to transact. It's a way to get things done. So I would argue the value of a currency is kind of inherently based on the fact of how many people trust its value, how many people are using it every day, how many people are accepting it every day. And by this definition, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum and a lot of these other cryptocurrencies and digital assets have a ton of value because they have thousands thousands of people that will accept them. But there's an entire community that's being developed that trusts the value of these assets. And therefore it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy that that gives these assets value. You know, so now taking a step back, I'm thinking like, how do we value Bitcoin? How do we value Ethereum? So I've, I've, I'm trying to break this down into the fundamental statistics. You know, there's no cash flows here. There's no earnings. This is totally different than thinking about a stock. And that's why I think it's so scary and it's such a new field. And I don't really, I can't even really wrap my head around it, but that's also why I want to start learning, like dive into it. What are the crypto fundamentals? Like what are the, you know, building blocks of how we can understand what these cryptocurrencies and digital assets are? Well, I've come up with a couple for you guys. And the first one is network value or market cap. Really simply, this is taking the price per coin or token of something, multiplying it by how many tokens or coins it has outstanding to get a market value. This is very similar to how you think about the market value of a stock like Apple or Tesla. You just take the price per share times the amount of shares and you get the market cap or value of a company. To give you guys an example of how this would work in the digital currency space, we can take something like Bitcoin, which at its current price is about $7,200. There's about 16.7 million Bitcoin outstanding. If we multiply those together, we get to a number of 120 20 billion as the network value of Bitcoin. So what is this telling you? If you added up the value of every single Bitcoin out there it would be $120 billion. And this is a fascinating metric alone because it allows you to wrap your head around, okay, Goldman Sachs is worth 90 billion. Bitcoin is worth 130 billion. You know, there's $7.8 trillion worth of gold in the world. You know, how does that compare to this Bitcoin number? To put things a little more in context, like with Ethereum, let's say, Ethereum's about 325 per token. There's about 96 million tokens outstanding. This puts the network value of Ethereum at about 31 billion or about one fourth of Bitcoin. Bitcoin Cash, which is receiving a bunch of attention lately, is trading at about $1,200 per coin and has about 16.8 million coins outstanding. If we do the math on that, that gets us to a network value of about 20 billion. Moving to metric number two. This is something that I think is really fascinating. I'm still trying to wrap my head around if it's comparable among other digital assets or currencies or really what it means, but this is daily transactions. How many transactions occur on the blockchain of a given digital asset or digital currency? Why is this so important? Because the value of a network inherently is how big it can scale. Like how big can this get? How many transactions can it process? How many people are using it? How many people accept it? I think the best way to get a pulse of this metric is just the daily transaction. If there's a, a currency that's having 5 million people use it every day versus a currency that's only having 5,000 people use it every day. Like the one with 5 million just seems like it would have way more value and should have a higher network value. And this is a way we can start to think about the traction and utility of a given digital asset based on how many transactions that happen each day. For instance, for Bitcoin, over the last seven days, it's averaged about 270,000 transactions per day. Ethereum, for instance, has averaged about 430,000 transactions per day. Bitcoin Cash has averaged about 40,000 transactions per day over the last seven days. And that's up a good amount because Bitcoin Cash has recently been spiking, but that's another story. Network value and daily transactions are two fascinating metrics to start looking at, at cryptocurrencies. So then I was thinking like, okay, like let's adjust the market cap of a cryptocurrency for how many transactions it has per day so I can see as an investor, what is the price I'm paying for the amount of transactions going on this network? I think this is the closest thing to some sort of PE ratio or some way to tap into the fundamental relative value of a digital asset. So to help you guys understand this a little better, let's run through the calculations. Digital asset fundamental number three is what I'm calling the PT ratio, price per transaction. 
So it's really the PPATR ratio, which is price per annualized transaction ratio, which means I take the average daily transaction that's happening with Bitcoin, say 270,000, multiply that by 365 to get the annualized rate of how many transactions are occurring on the network. So for Bitcoin, 270,000 transactions times 365 days in a year gets to us an annual transaction run rate of about 99 million. Then we take the network value of Bitcoin, remember we calculated that earlier, of 120 billion, divide that by 90 9 million and you'll get a number about 1200 and this is the PT ratio. So what that's telling you is Bitcoin is valued at $1,200 for every transaction that happens on its network per year. And you know, whether that's a lot or a little, I really have no idea, but I think it's a fascinating metric because we can start to compare that to other digital assets. Bitcoin Cash, for instance, remember a market value of 20 billion. And if you take their average transactions per day, of about 40,000 times 365, we get an annualized transaction rate of Bitcoin Cash for about of about 14. 14.6 million, 20 billion divided by 14.6 million gets us to a PT ratio of a little over 1300. So this is really fascinating because now as we can see, even though Bitcoin has about six times the market cap of Bitcoin Cash, Still, because it has so many more transactions on its network, it's actually cheaper on a PT basis paying per the amount of transactions happening on the network. So that's really fascinating. Now, if we do Ethereum, Ethereum's averaging about 430,000 transactions per day over the last seven days. Yep, that's almost double Bitcoin. Really impressive. If we annualize that, we get to about 157 million transactions per year run rate happening on the Ethereum blockchain. Now we take the network value of 31 billion, divide it by that 157 million number, and then we get a PT ratio of only about 200 for Ethereum. So this is fascinating because remember, uh, take a look at this. Here's all the PT ratios. You see normal Bitcoin is about 1200, Bitcoin Cash about 1300, Ethereum about 200. So on on the what you're paying per transaction that the network is actually processing, Ethereum is six times cheaper than Bitcoin. And re personally, this is one of the reasons I'm starting to get really bullish on Ethereum over every other cryptocurrency is because Bitcoin, as you can see, its transaction volume is really flatlining. And I think this is indicating that the network is hitting its peak scale. And this is why there was that whole debate about SegWit it. They're trying to create a hard fork to increase the scalability of Bitcoin because simply it cannot boost its amount of transactions per day past this $250,000, $300,000 wall. Ethereum, on the other hand, is seeing its transactions skyrocket to over 400, 500,000 per day. And the community, Vitalik, is leading the charge to implement new technology that will be able to increase the peak transactions per second. This will be able to increase the scalability of the network. And I think we're going to see this transaction volume of Ether continue to rise as the community develops better and better technology. Now, there could be a million holes in this, in this method. Like Bitcoin is more of digital gold, more of a store of value. So it's less about transacting. Ethereum is a network where the tokens are actually used to execute smart contracts. So maybe there's a lot more transactions happening there that wouldn't be happening on the Bitcoin network. Does that mean that Ethereum's network actually has more value, even though it's transacting more? I don't know. But this is an interesting way to frame the traction and the engagement of a certain cryptocurrency for what you're paying for its network value. So I think the PT ratio is something that I'm going to start using more and more. And I think is a fascinating way to look at these digital assets and figure out what you're paying for the amount of transactions that are occurring on this network. Now we're getting a little bit more technical stuff. And this is based on a paper that I read that I'm going to link to. It's by a guy called Chris Berninsky, I think. And he is putting out some of the best crypto valuation research that I've ever, like that I've read, period. You guys should be following on Twitter. You should be reading all his stuff. Like this guy is an emerging thought leader. I think in five to 10 years, people are going to look back at the theories that he's been putting out and be like, wow, this guy laid the foundational groundwork for the entire theory of crypto valuation. And he put out this excellent Medium post, which goes into the framework of how to think about the valuation of cryptocurrencies and digital assets of kind of like, okay, there's the utility value, which is actually what it's used for today. And then there's the speculative value, which is what we think this asset will be used for in the future. And the price of a given coin or token or asset or whatever is a mix of this utility value, real actual value that it can provide in the real world and speculation on all the value that it will provide. The way he kind of frames this in a very simple example is the remittance market. So the remittance market, he says, is about 436 billion annually. If we assume that Bitcoin could take 10% of that market, that's a $43.6 billion opportunity. Now, if we divide that 46, $43.6 billion number by a velocity of 1.5, assuming people can use the same Bitcoin more than once, then we get to an implied network value of 30 billion if Bitcoin takes 10% of the remittance market with a velocity of 1.5. Now, based on the number of Bitcoins outstanding, at the time that he published this paper, it was about 14.7 million, 30 billion divided by 14.7 million gets you to about 2,000 per Bitcoin. So this is how he justified his investments on purchase of Bitcoin, which was like, look, the remittance market is just 
one area that Bitcoin can get can get into, and if they get into it with a 10% market penetration, we think that this is going to drive Bitcoin to 2,000 per coin. At the time that he put this out, Bitcoin was only trading at 280 per, per coin. This justified upside, and this is kind of the investment case. This is you know a fascinating way to think about cryptocurrencies and digital assets. Is like how big is the market they're attacking? What percentage of that market do I think they're going to get, and when? What price per coin does that imply? and then discount it back to where it is today and you can get a fair present value for what that is. And so I have another example for you guys because I think the remittance market is cute, whatever, but to me, Bitcoin could be digital gold. So I thought, okay, the, the amount of gold in the entire world is about 7.8 trillion. Let's assume that only half of that is for investment purposes, 3.9 trillion worth of gold. This is the TAM, total addressable market that Bitcoin's attacking. Let's say that they get 20% penetration of this TAM. That's an opportunity of 780 billion. Let's assume the maximum amount of Bitcoin that will ever be issued, 21 million, fully diluted, 780 billion divided by 21 million gets us to a price per Bitcoin of about $37,000, assuming that they get 20% penetration of this gold market. Then you would say, okay, we got the, I don't think that'll happen for another 10 years. So I discount it at whatever rate for the past 10 years and then figure out a fair price today. And the discounting part is a little bit more confusing, a little bit more traditional financy. I personally care about it less because I just simplify things, you know, so much cleaner thinking, Okay, if they can get to that 20% penetration of gold, then we're looking at a 780 billion market cap for Bitcoin. That's 37,000 a coin. It's at 7,000 now. Do I think a five or six times return on my money for the risk of that happening is worth it? Maybe, you know, and, and and remember, valuation is more of an art than a science. That kind of wraps up my, my thoughts for today. And I, I hope this episode leaves you with more questions than answers. That's my real goal here. I think the financial media and kind of just the news cycle in general, like they want to portray that they're experts, that they know everything, that they're telling you here's what to do, here's right and here's wrong. Like I think that's such a bad mentality for finance and economics. Like the, the theories are always changing. You need to be always learning. You can always be proven wrong. Like the best theories have yet to be discovered and have yet to be thought of in this field. And that's why it's so exciting to push the limits. And that's why my goal with this episode is to leave you guys with more questions than answers and start a discussion about how we can value cryptocurrencies and digital assets. Yeah, leave your comments, let me know. Before I go, I wanna give you guys some resources on where I got all this data and like awesome places to find out more about digital assets and cryptocurrencies. Coin Market Cap awesome website that lists out all the biggest cryptocurrencies and digital assets with how many there are outstanding, what's the current price, what market cap that implies. Like I check this site every day. I think it's awesome. Bit info charts. Like this is what I discovered today. They have all these charts. It's like you can get as deep as you want. So much data. I'm going to link to this all in the description so you guys can check it out. Another thing I would say to learn about digital assets, cryptocurrencies, guys, Twitter. Twitter is huge. Like Berninsky, I follow him on Twitter and like I'm getting so much good news like that. Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, I feel like is, you know, he's putting out all his gospels on Twitter. Follow everybody you can in the crypto space that you respect. And that's a great way to learn too. The other thing is there's an invest like the best podcast by a guy called Patrick O'Shaughnessy. He did a mini series on his podcast called Hash Power, where he goes through like three hour, two hour long episodes, interviews some of the best thought leaders in this digital asset space and goes all about how to think about the blockchain, Ethereum, just starting from the basics. I'm going to link to that podcast. I think that is the best place to start if you're into finance and want to learn more about this. And he also has another podcast, which he just did, that is an interview with Berninsky. Everybody should check out too. And anyway, that's Hyperchange. This is Investing 101. Love to know what you guys thought about the episode. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.